people always talk about how dry it is here this year or last year. They say it was never this dry and my grandpa always used to say it's always been this dry. You look at pictures of the Clarks Fork Valley from 100 years ago and there were no trees, there was nothing. I mean it was just as bare as that area between you know Franny and Powell. I mean it was just nothing here until we started irrigating. Uh, this spring was very dry. I planted my malt barley in some areas where I'd plant barley on barley in just a couple pivot corners. Normally, we get a little rain in the spring, I go out and I spray all of my cheat grass and any volunteer that may have came up. Well, this year, didn't get any rain. I went out and planted my barley, I got a rain, the cheat grass and everything came up with the barley. Couldn't spray it to knock the cheat grass out, so I had to wait for my barley to get taller than my cheat grass. <laughs> so, there are things that are probably going to be pretty in certain years. Um, we're about 3,500 feet and our annual precipitation is between 10 and 12 inches. Yeah, we had a uh, few big thunderstorms roll in in the last few years where you might get, you know, an inch of rain in 20 minutes or, or more. And everywhere that we've no-tilled, like, we kept that water. It, we puddled up out there maybe a little bit, but it didn't run. And uh, the roads were, you know, flooded out and stuff at the bottom of fields where, where they had worked the ground. Uh, all the water just ran right out of the field. and. Uh, one of my neighbors had his beans cut and it actually floated the beans down to the bottom of the field. And my field's right next to it. Uh, you couldn't hardly tell that it had rained. The weather benefits I'm seeing from no-tilling, hard rains are usually absorbed more by the soil. Uh, we keep more of that moisture. You don't run off into the end or across the roads or anything like that. Uh, wind events are less of a problem. We don't have any soil blowing or moving. The drought uh, that we're having this spring, our sugar beets aren't showing any uh, sunburn leaves or anything like that. The roads don't drift around here just because you're, you're holding all that snow out there on your fields and you're not noticing that brown snow because your, your snow don't move. And it might blow off the beet, sugar beet fields a little bit still when you only have a 30 year ground moving snow instead of all of it, it makes a difference. No tilling, get, I don't know, it seems, if you have all that, that cover there and stuff like that, you don't have to worry about frost as much in the spring. I mean, you've got to get a couple more degrees out of it because your ground is warmer. Uh, there are a few other things about no-till I really like for that reason. But if on the same token, you may have to wait a week or two to get out there to plant because it's probably going to be wetter. But it's easier to dry ground out than it is to make it wet. So that's something I can live with. You think, well, I don't know, one year you think that the weather seems to be getting nicer and warmer and you feel like, you know, global warming is really a thing and then there'll be that, you know, December where you get three feet of snow and it's uh, 30 below zero and you really forget about how warm it was last summer. <laughs> <laughs>